Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Fornax and today I will be diving into the world of Cyberpunk 2077. Now, disclaimer, this content is not sponsored at all. This is purely a passion project because I'm a big science fiction fan. So, back when CD Projekt Red announced they were creating a cyberpunk RPG, I was, well, hyped to say the least. Now we are at the back end of 2018, which has been a year of announcements and reveals for this much anticipated project. And although the game is still very much undercover and eyelash deep in its production phase, I feel comfortable now chatting about my hopes for it going forward and what I think its ethos will be. So let's jump into the crapitastic world that Mike Pondsmith created starting with the ethos of this gaming universe. Often in games, and as gamers, we are cast as the hero of the piece. Almost Captain America style. It's all daring do and Mary Sue and selflessness and self-sacrifice. You know, it's winning the day, saving the city, saving the world, saving insert valuable thing. The typical Hollywood box office like story piece from the 1990s. And if you're looking for that, Cyberpunk will be happy to disappoint you at every turn. It's also not akin to Fallout, not even the good one. Now, there have been nukes dropped in its law, and I imagine that there will be vast stretches of no man's lands, and perhaps in the distant, beautiful future, we will adventure there. But the dystopian landscape we have seen thus far is actually vibrant, and beautiful, at least in part, and I'm personally very pleased about that. Like all contemporary urban environments, our playground, Night City, is a bipolar riot of pristine corporate opulence and the disenfranchised, gut-wrenching squalor of poverty. The governance under which the majority of the denizens of this city suffer is for all intents and purposes an oligarchy. Greed, power, and corruption are simply the order of the day. You work the system or you are crushed under it. So this is not a story where you save the world. I think cyberpunk will be a dark, harrowing tale of survival in a world gone mad. Not that cyberpunk is a survival game in the traditional sense, although it is likely with the level of granular detail CD Projekt Red have lavished on world building, there may well be elements of soft survival mechanics embedded in its code. Let's talk about the star of the show. And I am not referring to our character V, I'm talking about Night City itself. From the trailers and the gameplay footage, I think we are about to experience something very special indeed. The perfect union of visual storytelling and embedded narratives spun into a tapestry of immersive gameplay, which could be truly paradigm shifting for the gaming industry. Now, personally, my gaming history is littered with half finished role playing games, much to my personal shame because at some point during my game play through the campaign, I just lose heart. Because to me, they have almost uniformly felt empty. Beautifully crafted worlds, full of meaningful NPCs, sadly stuck on loops. There are vast landscapes fashioned to breathtaking effect that sadly seem only to echo that odd sense of isolation in the game. Now, the only game which has come close to masking that kind of lonely vibe is The Witcher 3, which is in no small way why I have great hopes for Cyberpunk 2077. Now, many players just simply assumed that as with the much loved and venerated Witcher series, CD Projekt Red would frame our adventure through the lens of third person perspective. In fact, there was a collective gasp when it was revealed that 2077 would be a first person experience. And I was there too, clutching my pearls in a gasp horror, because I'm going to be honest with you, 
I am profoundly rubbish at first person, be it real life or in game. I have horrific spatial reasoning. It's it's not good, guys. So I was genuinely crestfallen about this news, but as a trickle of reviews made its way onto the internet, my fears turned more to like curiosity and a vague optimism. Now, the most notable comments, the comments that kind of caught my attention and assuaded some of my fears came from gaming journalists, and but mostly content creators, saying that this perspective added a level of enhancement to the immersion because of the perspective, not despite it. They described as they were walking through the crowded streets of Night City, you would naturally overhear conversations and snippets of arguments so that the world around you revealed itself in a natural way, so that you were immersed inside it, embedded inside it, not hovering above the shoulder of your avatar like a disembodied or detached observer. Now, you can chalk my open-minded optimism up to fangirl faith, and I I can probably own that a little bit, but I think CD Projekt Red has earned their stay of execution on Twitter, at least for now. As we look out over the ruinous gaming landscape, with the burning wreckage of Bethesda and Blizzard Activision as they uh, they death spiral in their PR PR hells, CD Projekt Red seems to be one of the last bastions, the last great hopes of the gaming community. Um, the, a company that puts product before shareholder profit, if you can believe such a thing in this modern day and age. Honestly, they have always taken the time, working their collective asses off, and historically have produced some of the best games I've ever played. So I am willing to trust that they have not taken this decision lightly, and I'm going to reserve judgment until I'm actually in-game. Let me know what you think about third and first person in the comments below. And I've been thinking about who Cyberpunk 2077 is made for. I've been thinking about the audience that it's going to attract. And honestly, I think the game's appeal is going to be broad and far-reaching, from fanboys and girls like me to bored uh, Counter-Strike players because I think generally the gaming world is interested to see and will flock to this game just to see if all the hype around this game is actually justified. Because let's face it, how often have we been hyped to the dizzying heights of lunacy only to be let down? So they have a lot to live up to. Getting back to demographics, I think it's predominantly going to draw in gamers hunting for a deep and engaging story. They will be the first to pitch their figurative tents outside CD Projekt Red's storefront, decked out in their finest Sunday best techno-punk cosplay gear, of course. <laughs> and this, I am unashamed to say, this, this is my tribe. These are my guys and gals, the nerdy, geeky lore hounds of the gaming world. We who fall in love with the worlds we adventure through because they are not a distraction to us. They enrich our lives as much as any lover of Tolkien is enriched when they fall into the fictive dream of his world. Now, no literary agent would consider a day lost in a novel wasted time or useless childish escapism. Yet, sadly, they are happy to brand gamers as such. In truth for me, I came not to escape the world. As much as I feel like we're living in the upside down, it is a crazy alternate reality at the moment, but I'm a gamer because I have a wanderlust, a burning desire to explore not just this world, but countless worlds born in the minds and imaginations of others. I want to live and breathe the stories in Night City, not lose myself on the ride, but discover who I am or who I could be when faced with dark and difficult choices. Now, perhaps that is a lot to live up to, even for this award-winning game studio. But, 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 hope springs ever eternal, at least for this fangirl shell. <laughs> 
If you like this video, please show some love to Molini, Ada, Jolly Joe Star, Nicholas Meyer, Hayne, Doug Griever, and all my wonderful patrons, without whom I would be unable to dedicate the time and resources I do to my content creation. I could never thank them all enough. Now, I will be creating more Cyberpunk 2077 content in 2019 and beyond. My aim is to arm players with lore tidbits to enrich your gaming experience once launch arrives, so you can spot Easter eggs, know which corporations are corrupt and which are downright evil, and which tech drives its host nuts. Now, that kind of information might prove life-saving on the dark streets of Night City. You never know. So. Please subscribe so you don't miss my next installment of cyberpunk goodness where we'll be diving into the history of Night City itself and its corporate overlords. <laughs> but, I don't know why I did that, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.